today I'm going to show you how to make the brown beef stew for um, the, we're in the meat unit. And the purpose of you doing the brown beef stew is it is a moist heat method um, that you will be applying to cooking your beef. Um, first, a dry heat method, you're going to be adding lots of moisture to this and cooking it over a little bit of time. <clears throat> you're going to get a whole day to prep this up, um, just so you're not as rushed when you actually bring it through the cooking process. Um, so what I'm going to show you is a little bit of our mise en place. Uh, the, one of the first things you're going to be doing is cutting up your onion, and um, you're just going to cut it up and then measure it using a scale, so I've already done that. Um, I've already pre-measured our salt and pepper, uh, our beef. A little bit of tomato puree, which is going to help uh, make our nice dark brown color. A little bit of flour, which helps uh, thicken up our stew so it's not just pure liquid. Um, the recipe doesn't have this, but often we have extra celery, carrots, or whatnot. So um, I'm going to add some carrots to this just so you can kind of see where it would be put in. Since this is savory cooking, you can pretty much put anything into the stew that you really want. Uh, obviously, that goes. <clears throat> and then the last thing. Um, is your sachet, which is almost like a little bit of a tea bag of flavors, essentially. So to this, this is our cheesecloth, okay? And you're going to be tying up your cheesecloth with a little, little bit of twine, okay? And each pair will get some of this to use. Um, and to this, you are going to be putting in <clears throat> some parsley stems, and we need uh, five of them. There's three, four, five. <clears throat> and you can just pull off the leaf. If you really want, you could leave the leaf on, but it's not necessary. You're just going to kind of twist this, put this right into the center, like so. Then to that, we are going to add in some peppercorns, which is what makes black pepper. They're just in its whole form. Um, if you wanted to extract some flavors uh, before you actually use this uh, sachet, you could toast this, and you'll get some of those essential flavors out. Um, you're going to be using one bay leaf. Remember, this is just a, to enhance the flavor of the stew. This is not going to actually stay in there. And then you're going to use some thyme, which is just another dry ingredient that we have. And then what you're going to do is you're going to fold it up like so, all four corners. And then you're going to twist. And you want to leave some space because it's going to be draped into your pot and you are going to double knot this. So we'll be back and I'll show you how to make your Hello and we're back. I'm going to show you how to make your beef stew now. Um, what I've done is I've taken a medium sized saucepan. This is what you should use for making your stew. Um, if you notice the recipe has you making, um, reducing this amounts in half. If you were going to make the full amount, you would use obviously a bigger uh, pot. So to this, I've already heated my oil. You want it nice and hot, okay? And then I'm going to put my I'm going to put cubed beef right into there. Um, any kind of beef, really, beef chuck is works best because it's a little bit tougher. And since you're cooking this for a long period of time, um, it will loosen up those particles. Okay, so now what you're going to do is just give it a quick little stir around. I'm going to turn up my heat just a little. And then what I'm going to do is you want to season your meat. I'm just going to put a little bit of salt and some pepper. And remember, you, um, the recipe just called for a little. You can add more, adjust your seasoning. You can always add more at the end when the stew is done. Now what the recipe says for you to do is you're, you don't want to, you're going to cook this until all, you see no more pink. So we'll be back when um, it's all cooked. Alright, so our beef is all cooked up. And the recipe actually said, um, I want to correct myself from the prior little segment, so to cook this in batches. The reason why I want you to cook in batches is just so, it says not to overcrowd the pan, but you're not making that much beef. So to save on purpose of time, you can put all the beef in there at the same time. Just make sure you're keeping an eye on it and that you're moving it around so it's all cooked thoroughly. So to this, I am going to add in my onions, and you're going to be adding five ounces of onions. And a lot of times students are like, I don't like onions, I don't want to add it. They're going to cook down so much, you're not even going to know that they're in the stew. Okay, so you're just going to move that around. To that, I'm also going to add in my garlic that I've just minced up. And that's just going to add a little bit of flavor. And then at this point, if you're going to add in any other vegetables, like I'm adding in carrot, 
um, I'm, you're going to add it at this point. Just so it cooks down um, and it's tender. Because the carrot is very crisp, it takes some time. Um, so you want to make sure it's, it's cooked. Um, another little helpful hint is since carrot does take so long to cook, you're just going to want it to be very small. Sometimes students keep them like full rondelles or things like that, and then they're crisp. So you just want to make sure that the smaller it is, you don't want it minced, but it's going to cook quicker. So I'm just going to stir this around. And then what you're going to do is you're going to let this just kind of sit and cook, stir it occasionally, and uh, for about, until the onions are a little bit brown. It's probably going to take about 8 to 10 minutes. All right? So we'll be right back. All right, so we're back, and as you can see, the, there's bond at the bottom. That's normal. Um, that will go away once we add in our uh, brown stock, and then the onions are all cooked. The carrots are tender. So now what you're going to do <clears throat> is you're going to add in your flour. The flour is a thickener, and you're going to be making a roux with the fat from the beef. Okay, and a roux is just a combination of fat and flour. And what you're going to do, so you're just going to stir this around, just like so. And you won't even be able to see it. It'll be somewhat pasty. That's totally normal. I just don't want any lumps. And as you can see, I have none. Okay. So now what you're going to do is to that, we are going to add in our uh, brown stock, which is like a beef broth. <clears throat> you can make this homemade or you can just simply buy it from a can. You can uh, buy bouillon cubes uh, and, and make it that way with water. Um, this is just a little bit quicker. So we're going to start by pouring it slowly so it doesn't clump up with our roux, just like so. And I didn't see any clumps, that's why I just added the rest in. So I'm going to stir it around and I just want to make sure I'm getting everything off the bottom of the pan because that's flavor. And I can feel that it's coming up. And then to that, <clears throat> for color, I'm going to add in my tomato puree. Just need two ounces. Let's add that directly to there. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take that. Say, let me mix this around first, just to kind of get that incorporated, so it's not chunky. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sachet, put it, submerge it right into our stew. And I'm just going to attach it <coughs> to my handle. And I'm going to put my lid on. And I'm going to let it simmer for a couple of minutes or until your teacher says it's the end of the period, time to put it away. Then what we'll do is we'll reheat this tomorrow and you'll eat it with some noodles. So we'll be right All right, so we're back and our stew um, is done. You will, um, when you store this the first day, you can leave the sachet in there because you can reheat with it. Um, and I am, you're actually going to just discard the sachet, so I'm just going to put it in the garbage can. And then your stew is done, it should be a nice rich color. Um, you're going to be eating it with egg noodles, as long as your class is good. If it's not good, you just eat it plain. Um, but egg noodles is nice. And then you can just spoon it right over the top, like so. I'm going to add just a little more. And then you can eat and enjoy. Thank you.